The third year in the core program is focused on global learning. And one of our competencies here at the college is to increase students' global and cultural understanding. The idea that you could learn the skills to navigate a place that you're not familiar with, navigate cultures that you're not familiar with, and do that in a way that's respectful, you can learn from those experiences and kind of incorporate that into the lifelong learner that you are. And I think every one of the students really was up to the task of integrating and taking as much from the experience as they possibly could. I met Herman in 2003 and it was when I was working on my dissertation at George Mason University. He introduced me to beekeeping in 2012. I started to travel with him each summer down to the Amazon. And we were there in a research capacity. We were interested in native varieties of bees, identifying them and seeing how they could be domesticated to produce a form of supplemental income for these indigenous and mestizo communities. And so after doing this work for a couple years, we were interested in involving our students. We were both educators, we were both teaching courses, and we wanted to expand the, that option to our undergrad and graduate students um, at the college. Last year was the first year that we had a traveling course. It was Life in the Amazon. What we're going to do on Tuesday, they said, we don't have anything due now um, until you have that draft. And we took eight students with us from Champlain and another eight to nine students from George Mason. But with the assignments that she provided us, such as, you know, taking a closer look at a certain part of the Amazon that we are interested in, I specifically did night walk, so animals of the night kind of got me a little bit more familiar with what I was going to be experiencing there. But I don't necessarily think that I was expecting to really branch out of my comfort zone as much as I did when I went on the trip. Yeah, I wasn't sure really what to expect. I knew I'd only been out of the country once before, and that was the Barcelona, so I knew the language barrier would definitely be an issue, but going to a more or less developed and developing country like Peru was going to be a lot different. There was definitely some nerves, but at the same time, it's excitement. Uh, one morning I woke up blind because I hadn't had my contacts in yet, and Kristen Wolf waves me into her and her mom's part of the house we are staying in and told me to look on the shelf, and so I'm kind of looking blind, trying to see what she's looking at, and it turns out to be a tarantula, like the size of my hand. <laughs> and Herman is trying to catch it with a net, if that just <laughs> tells you anything about who Herman is. <laughs> that was terrifying, but quite fun. The greatest memory I have from it is having the opportunity to accompany to the community members on a night hunt. Only four of us took the opportunity and went with them. So really being in the middle of nowhere in the Amazon rainforest 12 o'clock at night was definitely a really crazy experience. It's just a sense of adventure in not knowing uh, what the day's activities will bring. Many of these students hadn't been out of the country. They hadn't been on a plane before. Um, they didn't have a lot of experience with other cultures and the Amazon is a far reach to have your first experience, I would say, abroad. So I was very proud of everybody that went on the trip. <laughs> this is how you shower in the Amazon. You had grad students from GMU who were involved and interested in research down there. You had Jose who was interested in public health initiatives, Myrna who was interested in land use, and Mani who was interested in the beekeeping project itself. So what was really nice is that we could pair those our different disciplines as undergrads with the graduate degree seekers and they could collaborate with one another and so it made for a truly interdisciplinary learning experience. The idea of community-driven development 
is that the community is involved of the fate of the programming. Development that is identified by the community as important and it is a participatory structure that community members are involved in seeing these projects to fruition. We work with them to meet the objectives that they identify. I originally had this idea to kind of develop some sort of survey to collect basic health indication data. A, where do you get your water from? Do you treat your water? Fevers and diarrhea in your household. Almost everybody in the community surprisingly treats their water with chlorine droplets. Nobody really boils it. And for some reason, nobody is really prone to using rainwater. People are accustomed to getting their water from the river. Even though they show an understanding that there's a lot of diseases that come from drinking river water, Y aquí antes tenían, ¿verdad? En la noche de aquí para transportar un enjuerme, la noche es tanto difícil. She was just saying that they have a they have a they have a building here that they had as a health post, but nobody's there. Like she was just saying that like it's just wasn't well well managed right now. Like whoever was supposed to be doing it just like up and left, up and off. left. They took off. It's not maybe not in reality. Maybe it's not exactly like that. But whatever it was, it fell through. Los indica los otros. Los indica los otros. Que si están creciendo bien. So, así. Relajado, relajado. Así, así. The circumference? Yes. Por ejemplo, ahorita es. Estas infecciones que están viniendo ahorita. Que les da fiebre, vomit y diarrea. También hay malaria. De todo, ahorita están por motivos de, de esta baja del agua, están viniendo a enfermedades, las gripes, fuertes gripes. I can't come into these communities and say, you know what, I want to do this. I'm going to do it. It has to be something that's very hands on with the community, something that, you know, involves community members and something that incorporates their wants and needs. So through this survey, I want to learn that. I want to learn what they feel is the most important issues that are facing with, what they feel the best answers to those problems are. Hopefully within the next year or so, I'll develop some sort of project, whether it be a simple hygiene program that teaches people the importance of washing their hands and boiling their water, or it can be something as big as, hey, working with the community to try to find the funding and the resources necessary to have a functioning health clinic here. <laughs> So here in the Chino community, um, they're using beekeeping as a way or a new source of income um, for the community. And right now they're using stingless bees, which is only found here in the tropical area. There currently are five hives in the community, um, and this is from last year. Um, but during the flooding, they actually lost quite a number, but there are still a lot of interested beekeepers. So this trip, we're coming to see the progress and to see you know, what kind of problems people are having really get the good and the bad and try and make some new solutions. The other day they were building new hives out of a different form of wood and they're using a harder wood, a red wood. That's what the fleas would prefer more because they don't usually use a soft wood in nature. So we're trying to make it as easy for both the beekeepers and the bees as possible. Other than in the Chino community, we're also going to be going to Diamante, which is another community farther up the river. They actually don't have bees yet, so we will be bringing this concept to them. Okay. Aquí encima y la vamos a sentar así. Que coge equilibrio. Enseguida. Diamante is not as, as advanced as Chino is, and so bringing in beekeeping would really help this community enrich their resources. It's something that they've heard that was being done in Chino. I mean, it's something that they decided that they wanted to do as well. So it's, all of this is about added source of opportunity and increasing the income in the community. Happy bees, you get happy honey, so, which is good for everybody, absolutely. And then when I started to get more involved with it and understanding more about these stingless bees and the type of honey that they produce and that the revenue that it could really give to these communities, and I understand how lucrative these bees could be to this community and how 
simple it was for us to go down there to take our time and to you know, learn from Herman and teach them ourselves how to build the hives and how to so this is the not ruin these hives, but also how to collect the honey. So some things that were really, I think, important to helping the Chino community use these bees as revenue. We land in Iquitos, which is a very teeming tropical urban landscape. And after spending a few days there, it's very obvious to see the effects of globalization there. Then we move into the Chino community and upriver you have a secondary jungle. The secondary tropical rainforest has been impacted by mining, has been impacted by cattle, and this is where uh, you can also see signs of resource exploitation um, but in recovery. So the Chino community has decided that it wants ecotourism to be its new base. And what it allows for students to see is that line of globalization and of impact. So you get to experience the different culture that that creates, um, but also see the effects of globalization and how far reaching it actually has been. Living in the community was something that you really can't understand unless you go there. Like they don't need like fancy TVs or uh, running hot water. There's no, no air conditioning, they just use the environment to live a much more simple life. It's a weird idea that there was only, I think, like 350 people in this community and that they knew each other and it was, you know, one singular block and we were, we were outsiders and it was a little strange to be put in that situation, but they were extremely welcoming. We had a good time. Even though there was not, you know, a lot of people or a lot of things to do, we really were welcome to the community as, you know, as guests. In our closing session, Herman had asked the students to go around and kind of sum up in a phrase or a couple words what the trip meant to them. And a lot of students landed on the idea that you need to go with the flow. You have to be ready for anything, and emotionally, I think that that can be a little taxing in the outset. If it's hard for you to have a handle on yourself. It can take away from the immersive experience that you're having on the trip. It's just a sense of adventure in not knowing what the day's activities will bring. And I think everybody embraced that and did every possible thing that was offered. And I think that that shows the hardiness of this first group of individuals and I hope will set a precedent for those who travel in the future. Hey.